Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and to another list build uh, for the Germans. The first of the late war books, the Germans Fortress Europe, was a compilation book for all the four major nations. Uh, that was a bit of um, a stopgap um, to the new point system. Um, Fortress Europe German was quite good for the time, because obviously we didn't have any other books, uh, German players. Um, obviously it doesn't get used much anymore, I suppose you have like slightly different uh, combinations in this book, but um, a lot of the stuff can be done with the other books anyway. But it still exists, and for newer players who bought Fortress Europe and uh, delving into the Germans, it's a good start. So let's have a look at the formations. They're quite basic lists, because obviously um, there's very limited command cards with Fortress Europe, which kind of makes it good for newer players. Um, but we'll get started with the Tiger Tank Company. So here we have the Tiger Tank Company. So a uh, tricky list to work with, uh, but I decided to have eight Tiger Tanks over four different units, uh, two of which are probably going to end up going in reserve. So the other four are going to have to, uh, usually I think would be decent for attack, but just be careful with them. Um, so if you're coming straight from mid-war, you'll notice the points difference are quite different. Tanks are a lot cheaper now, uh, showing that they're more round. Um, so there you go, two Tigers are 24 points rather than, I think it's 50 odd in mid-war. Uh, we have some scouts to help out, and we have one lucky card just in case your uh, Tiger doesn't do uh, so well with an armor save. So here we have the stats for the Tiger tank for late war is the uh, same as mid war, so it's careful, confident veteran with a two plus remount and a two plus last stand, so pretty good. So although they are quite small, brittle platoons, hopefully as long as you don't roll ones, you should be okay. Front armor nine is pretty decent if you're just using um, playing games from Fortress Europe, um, but when you start coming up against the more um, late war stuff um like late late war stuff you'll be a lot more 80 14 and 15 lurking about which makes your 89 not seem so good but don't fear against what armor you're up against because your 80 14 is still pretty good um late late war and in fortress europe you're going to smash through pretty much everything uh, that you're going to be up against okay so we have the panther tank company uh, bolstered by a few tigers um, so the Panther, um, so we have a late Panther tank now in late, late war, which tend to get used a little bit more than these Panthers, um, just because they uh, literally one point of armour in it, that's all. Um, we have two units of light scout troops here, uh, because we had a few points left over, and we also have Tiger Race. Now, Tiger Race obviously is going to be applied to your Tiger Tank unit. Uh, when they ent when they get deployed or when they enter the field, uh, basically um, you roll a die and like you have different options of what they can have, ranging from they have scout, they can fire extra shots, they can reroll a firepower, they're better in assaults, or you can pick. Uh, it's quite fun. Um, basically, it's that on the Tiger unit and then you can put a scout unit in reserve, that's why they're there. But unfortunately, no room for artillery and no room for infantry in this list, but we have a lot of heavy tanks. So here we have the Panzer tank, so we last saw it in Ghost Panzer. Uh, it's a bit better now, so it's careful, confident veteran with a last stand of a 3+. plus. So just bear in mind, if they do get bailed, it's still a 50-50 from the get-in. The biggest hindrance for the Panther uh, is the top one, meaning it's quite vulnerable in assaults. Uh, and like the Tiger 1, unless you've got anti-tank weapons, it's going to be okay. Um, it does have a good gun and an even better cross-check as well on the 2+. plus. Um, try to use these guys at long range as best as you can, because as you can see that front, that side armor 5 um, makes you very vulnerable to their uh, 80, 10 and 89 tanks um, milling around. Okay, so now we're on a Panzer 3 and 4 mixed tank company. So you will see that there's no infantry and no artillery um, because we do have a stopgap for that in this list and it also makes the formation very strong. Now, as you can see, 97 points of this list is in formation, which is pretty decent. We have um, HQ is a mixed unit of uh, a Panzer 4 and a Panzer 3. 
Uh, then we have a unit of Panzer fours, and uh, one of them is being dropped for a Panzer three. We then have three Tigers, the Tigers popping up again. Um, we then have another mix, uh, Panzer three mixed tank platoon uh, with two Panzer fours. And here we have what will fill the gap for the flame throw, uh, for the artillery and the infantry. Three flame Panzer threes to help you with your infantry problems, and then to give you that little extra push, the scout troop just to boost your uh, starting point if you can. Okay, so the Panzer IV mixed tank platoon or Panzer three mixed tanks platoons, they're the same, the same stats, uh, the same stats as they were in Ghost Panzer. So careful, confident veteran with a three plus last stand and three plus remount, pretty good. Front armor six is still okay, not as good as it was in mid war, since his um, AT12 is a lot more available, and so is AT10. So your front armor six doesn't look so good, but you still have a very good gun in the form of your AT11 uh, 7.5 centimeter gun. Um, the best thing with the Panzer IVs is because they're veteran and they have Stormtrooper. The best way you can use these is either put them in some cover onto a hill and keep blitzing and shooting and scooting them in and out of cover so they can't be seen or in concealment and pick off uh, lighter tanks like your other. So, so basically, Sherman versus Panzer IV, stat-wise, you should come out on top because your gun is slightly better and your uh, stats are slightly better, especially with the veteran uh, skill that you've got. Okay, so if you're using this list, this is your basically your little golden nugget. Please look after it because this is going to be getting rid of infantry. Um, you're dug in infantry that will be on an objective that you're trying to take. Bear in mind they are reluctant. They do have an okay last stand, but they're not going to be getting in, in a rush. Um, but what makes them so good, of course, is the flamethrower. Now with three of them, that's 15 shots. Even if they're dug in, careful infantry, you're hitting on sixes. You should you should be able to get one or two. And remember, if you hit one, that means they're pinned, and then the tigers can roll in and push them away. Hopefully. Okay, so now we're coming into probably a little bit more rounded lists here. Um, so we have a Stug a assault gun company with a lot of Stugs. So obviously it's designed uh, two units of these can go into reserve if you need it. Um, but now we also have scouts, artillery and infantry to help out. Fortunately they are foot sloggers, um, but remember now they have Panzerfausts. Um, we will see the Panzerfausts when we have a look, at, a look at the infantry. But the Stugs, slightly better armour than the Panzer IV, but obviously not really designed to be getting stuck in into assaults. Okay, so here we have the Stug. Careful, fearless veteran. Of course, counter attack is a five plus, and your assault is a four. These aren't really; these are self-propelled self guns. They're not wanting to get into assaults. The other downside to a Panzer IV is their cross check. Their cross check is a four, but the upside is their front seven, but their side three. So be careful of the flanks. Um, the gun is AT11. Can have a 10.5 centimeter if you wanted. Um, so it drops some AT, but goes up. On the firepower and it's brutal and it has heat. So, put into perspective, uh, it's front seven, so at long range is front eight. So, if you're against Shermans, you need a two to equal, and ones are the only failures, chance of getting killed. Um, so, decent enough. And even if you're against AT12, it's a 50 50. Um, but there you go. So, but remember, that's what the infantry are for in this list, because they're going to be the ones going to push the infantry other infantry off objectives and the artillery hopefully to help with that as well. Okay so now this is my favourite out of the book, the Panzer Grenadier Company. Um, so it, it, it is an armoured Panzer Grenadier Company as well, you, you can decide to have them with the half tracks or without, but they're probably the most rounded to have. Now with reserves of this list, they'll probably be the Tigers and then four points of something else so it depends what you don't really need so if you don't need the flamethrowers or the eight centimeter mortars straight away one of them will do or the armored 7.5s bear in mind if you lose the eight centimeter mortars you do have the vesps as well um but you have two platoons of armored panzer grenadiers both with panzer fausts um that will help out and then the flamethrowers can deal with enemy infantry so if you're against mostly armor you can put the the flamethrowers in reserve um, we do have Spearhead from the Scouts, more artillery from the Vesps. We have an OP this time. You can have an OP or a Lucky card, it's your choice. I like to have an OP because obviously the Lucky card is 
when it's gone, it's gone. And then three tigers to deal with heavier armor and also to be more of a threat um, going forward. Okay, so the Panzer Grenadier platoon retains the same stats as it did in mid war um, from Confident Veteran Careful with the last stand. Um, MG34 teams are the same, but this time, as you can see, it has a Panzerfaust anti tank. Only has a 4 inch range, but it's 80 12 with a 5 plus firepower, meaning that any tanks charging into these guys, this will hit their side armor, and then most things are not going to be able to withstand this. It's slow firing, so obviously if you're pinned or you're moving, it's plus one harder to hit. And you also got a rule there, limited one, which means any one of your teams when you fire can be a Panzerfaust team, and then when any one of your teams in the assault can be a Panzerfaust team, which means this doesn't die until the last team dies in your unit. So pretty good. Okay, and then we have the half track itself. Um, so the stats will change depending on if you have people inside them and how many. Um, bear in mind if you your half track gets destroyed in an assault, the teams inside die automatically. So be careful of that. But it does enable you to get in against rifle teams. The good thing about the half track is the amount of MGs you have, and for free you can change it to the 3.7 centimeter gun giving you anti-tank 6, so again, good against light armour and scout cars, and with a 4 plus firepower, good again rid of infantry. The 7.5 centimetre gun, worth its weight in gold, starting to show its age now in the late, late war books, but in Fortress Europe, pretty decent. It's the 89 gun that has heat, it's pretty good for a half-track chassis, so obviously it's a glass cannon, so it can deal a bit of damage, but it can't take it, not from anything, because it's only front one. Um, so just be careful you use these, um, usually if you're defending a pretty handy um, ambush unit, uh, but remember they do have MGs as well, So and uh, if you're not against armour, the 3 plus firepower is pretty good at digging out infantry as well. Okay, and ace up our sleeves with this uh, list in particular is the armoured flamethrower platoon. So obviously careful, reluctant veteran, so similar to the flame panzer, but um, basically four shots each from these guys on auto firepower. So if you're really struggling with those infantry on that objective, you bring these guys in. Just be careful, make sure you protect them on the way in and when they are there, because obviously it's very short range with these. But flamethrowers do really help you get rid of infantry. Even if you just need to pin them, all you need is that one hit and they're pinned and the auto firepower works a dream. Okay, so the Grenadier Company of Fortress Europe. So basically, the other Grenadier company you can get is in Progression, but they automatically come with Panzerfausts, and that includes the HQ, so it bumps up the cost. So this is why you might want to take it from this book, because you um, then can save your two points from your HQ, because I don't always like having my HQ on a Panzerfaust. I usually wish they did when I, when I don't. Um, but there you go. So it's a fairly short uh, formation with only four units, but the um, Grenadier platoons have a Panzerfaust, and they also have um, two heavy machine guns, and they also have a Panzer Shrek as well, which we'll have a little look at. With them as well, they also have four 8cm mortars, so that will help with the VESPs. Again, there we have a little bit of a dilemma with the Tiger Tank platoon, who goes in reserves with them. Um, Obviously, if you don't need spearhead, the scouts and the OP maybe, or maybe the 8cm mortars. Not ideal, but something to go in, because we probably would like the vests to start. But then the 8cm mortars will have to dig in, otherwise it'd be a bit vulnerable. Supporting them, we have our old friends, the Marder Tank Platoon. Four of them for 17 points now. Bargain. Um, we also have our scouts, as mentioned, vests, no P, and our Tiger Tank Platoon. Okay, similar comparison, the Grenadier platoon in mid-war, the stats are the same as the Panzer Grenadiers, the only difference is, is it's, uh, you lose uh, one shot from halted and move-in, because obviously these are uh, rifle MG teams, not MG34 teams. As you can see, they have Panzerfaust, the heavy machine guns as well. The Panzer Shrek is basically a German bazooka, 8-inch range, a little less anti-tank than the um, Panzerfaust with a 5-plus firepower. And it's still slow firing, and with this as well, it's Assault 4+, plus. so the Panzerfausts are the same rating as whatever the team is using, so in this case Veteran 3+, plus. the Panzer Shrek 
if you're hitting an assault it's a four plus and bear in mind the panzer shrek is its own individual team so if it dies you lose your panzer shrek okay so the light scout has made it through from mid war and is now in my list in late war because it is pretty good um it's cheap three points and it's got that 2.8 centimeter gun which still at this point is good against other scouts and lighter tanks and obviously if you're getting in the side of something can even kill a Sherman, which is side five off the top of my head. So there you go. But remember, they are reluctant. Uh, um, they have a good remount, but they don't counterattack very well, and they don't assault particularly well either. So just be careful. But it's the spearhead that you get out of it is why they're there. Okay, and the vest, which we saw quite a bit in uh, Iron Cross and Ghost Panzer, is back. It's cheaper now. It's careful, it's veteran, it's fearless, very good. And obviously, you know, it's the artillery we want it for, and that smoke barrage. That smoke barrage is very important. Use it well, you don't use it too early, and you don't use it too late. And also, you want it to work, but usually, it should with veteran on the 3 plus. And here we have our dear old Marder tank into platoon. Careful, confident veteran. Um, obviously, it's self propelled gun, so it's, it's not going to be counter attacking or assaulting particularly well. Holding up to other incoming rounds, not so much either. 80-12 Fortress Europe-wise, still very good. And obviously the later on you get, things start getting heavy, more heavily armoured. Um, but even against Shermans, which you'll see most of, should be able to deal with them even at long range. Depends how good your opponent is rolling for their saves. But a very good ambush unit. A very good unit for popping in and out of cover, because it's got Stormtrooper and his veteran. Just... If you use them, be careful of them, because even artillery can take them out. Um, but yeah, they're a good unit to have. And now being 17 points of four, pretty good steal. Okay, so that is it for the Fortress Europe book. Um, I hope you enjoyed. It's pretty basic in terms of list builds, um, but we added a lot more flavour, like we did with the American D-Day book, going from Fortress Europe with the D-Day German book. Now, with the Americans, as I said, it was quite a quick... Um, wait, it wasn't a long wait to get that book, but with the Germans it was a bit longer, and we were fighting up against the DD Americans for a while with Fortress Europe, waiting for our DD German. DD German will be a lot more fun because a lot more command cards, a few more units. We see the Falschirmjäger Jäger come back, um, and a lot more armored platoons as well. Um, we'll have Wrecker units, but overall, um, bit bad books in Fortress Europe, but don't forget Fortress Europe, everyone. We used it for so long, especially British and Soviet players. We had to use it for a very long time.